Okay, welcome to my 2013 retrospective in film. My honorable mentions for this year include About Time, Inside Lewin Davis, Her, Don John, and Hobbit Desolation of Smog. Not the entire movie, just the Smog bits, because I really like that those bits, but those are really, really good pieces of that film that make the entire movie worth it, because that's where it ends. I love cliffhangers. Doesn't matter if the next movie pays off well at all, because it doesn't. I like that movie a lot, as it is, because of the Cumberbatch, the smog, and the animation, whatever. My favorite bad movie from this year is... I forgot what it is. My favorite bad movie for this year is The Internship. I like this movie for its heart. I think it's really genuine and sweet, and the movie has some good emotions in it that I think really come out through how bad it is. I think that the people making this movie had something they wanted to communicate and they just didn't know how to do it and it's there and it's kind of fascinating how kind of they jumble it and, and I you have to respect the movie because it has something different to say that I don't think a lot of other movies have attempted uh, but the cast is not good in this movie and um, while it does have some talented people in it they just are not, either miscast or misdirected and the filmmaking is, is subpar and the writing is kind of corny the acting is definitely corny but all that kind of reflects this corny, sappy heart, and I've seen this movie multiple times, and it's like, I'm watching it, I'm thinking, this is not good, but I like it, and it's kind of hard to describe, but I have fond memories of this film, so that's why it's my favorite bad movie. My overlooked recommendation is Bad Words. As a big fan of Arrested Development, I love Jason Bateman. He starred in this movie, he directed it, I'm pretty sure he wrote it. I forgot to look that up, but I'm not doing it now, and he is incredible in this movie. He stars as a grown man who's found a loophole to uh, participate in children's spelling bees, and he's got a, a mission for it. You don't know that at the beginning, but towards the end of the film, you see what his plan is, and this movie, based off a title, Bad Words, very raunchy, but it uses it to good effect. Uh, Jason Bateman, he sometimes falls into playing the same character over and over, and this is a very different character for him playing kind of an unlikable guy, but you kind of see where he's coming from. The movie's hilarious. His relationship with the other kid that is his competitor is really cute. The movie does end up it's kind of, you know, off-putting and, and uh, rough at the beginning, but it ends up having a good heart at the end. And I think it's actually a really excellent film that not a lot of people saw, not a lot of people heard about. I highly recommend it. It obviously is not super strong in its filmmaking, and it's kind of obvious once you kind of see where the movie's going, and it's, it's not super deep, but I like it nonetheless, and I do highly recommend it. Now, of course, my favorite movie from this year, again, third year in a row, big over top action movie, Pacific Rim. I still like these kinds of movies, but I do feel that my taste has matured since then, but I still do have a very strong love for these crazy over the top action movies, Pacific Rim specifically, just watched a few weeks ago and still in love with it. I recognize that it's not the strongest story, but I do think that there's kind of a good subtle story under the surface, away from the main character. Uh, Raleigh, well, I like him because his first name is my middle name. Uh, not a very good character, but I do like Mako and her relationship with her father, played by Idris Elba. They should have been the main characters and they have a great story. I also like the subplot with the two scientists, one played by Charlie Day, who's having a lot of fun in this movie. Guillermo del Toro, I think the problem is since English is not his primary language, he doesn't do great with dialogue in his uh, English-speaking movies. But what he is missing there, he makes up for it in visuals. This movie looks awesome and is a strong case for action being an awesome genre for film because it's so visual, because film is a visual medium. And I just love the crap out of this movie, the monster design and the robots, the, the Jaegers, are so cool to watch, and although it's all CGI, it feels real. I think that you could get away with criticizing this movie and lumping it in with things like Transformers and, uh, you know, like like the big climaxes from the Avengers films, or just these, these modern action films that don't mean anything because of all the CGI. Yes, this movie's mostly CGI, but I think this is the one of the best uses of it. I would have loved to have seen Del Toro's original vision for having people in costumes. That could have been dope, but nonetheless, this movie, what CGI often misses is it doesn't stick in your head because you know it's fake. This movie manages to be real. In my head, at least, I remember everything that happens in it. I love the visual aesthetic, and when they can do practical effects and real props, like the inside of the Jaeger is real, that sells it for me. And so yeah, I think this movie on a technical level is absolutely incredible. I continue to watch it to this day. I loved it when it came out. 
I still love it now. And so that's all I've got for 2013. Let's move on to the incredible year of 2014. Ugh, excuse me. Wow. All right. Welcome to my 20. Her Don John. I have already forgot. Don John. Oh gosh, dang it! I already forgot. Um, Twelve. I'm uh, gonna move on to 20. Oh crap! I screwed it up. 